So in this video, I'm going to be giving you a little look behind the curtain, a little sneaky peek into how I manage my life and business using just two tools. Like I said in the intro, there is only two tools that I use to manage absolutely everything in my life and business, and that is ClickUp and Google Calendar. Let's start with Google Calendar because it's probably the simplest. <laughs> So I have four main calendars that I use. I know that sounds excessive, but let me explain. First, we have my business calendar. So this is anything related to my business that has a set date and time where I need to be or make a call or somewhere like that. And then within my personal calendar, I have three calendars. One is my just general calendar. So this is for any personal appointments that I have, such as doctor's appointments, I also use this for any lunch dates with friends so I can block that off my calendar. I also use this for any time blocking. So you'll see that Monday to Friday, I have a time block in there for my gym session. This is just kind of like a mental thing for me to be like, okay, you have a set day and time that you have to be at the gym. Makes me do it. And then I have a birthdays calendar, which is just that. It's a calendar specific for birthdays. And I also have these set up with an email reminder. So Google Calendar has the option under notifications to create a notification email. So all of my birthdays within this calendar have a, an email reminder set up to send me an email to my inbox a week before the actual birthday. That way I don't actually have to be looking at my calendar. It's just gonna end up in my inbox anyway, which is very handy. The last calendar I have is home and pets. Now this is a shared calendar with my partner so that we both know whenever uh, Hunter and Charlie are due for their worming, if they have any vet appointments. So those are all my four calendars. I also have a, a public calendar on here, which was the Queensland holidays because I live in Queensland, Australia. So it's just nice to know when we have holidays coming up. So I also have that on there, but I don't consider that one of my calendars. Now the next part is ClickUp. And I tell you, I could talk all day about ClickUp. All day, no joke. So here we are on ClickUp. This is the home screen on the day-to-day -day basis. This is where I spend majority of my time. And I feel like this is a really underutilized feature with ClickUp. I've watched so many ClickUp tutorials and I feel like this just gets skipped over and I don't know why because I am obsessed with it. I love it. I use it every single day. So on the left here is your work section. So this will show you any tasks that you are allocated to you that are due today. You can also see any overdue tasks and also tasks that are coming up next. On the right hand side, this is your calendar. And here I actually have linked my Google calendars to click up and you can see over here on the right hand side that up top here where it says calendar, you can see all four of my calendars that I have linked in ClickUp. So I've got those linked in here and what that will do is I've got nothing on today, it's a Saturday. But if I go back to yesterday being Friday, you'll see here that the calendar events will show up in purple. So you see I had a, a block out here for the gym. I also had a, an appointment with an osteo and a house cleaner came yesterday and you'll see that those are already on my calendar because they've pulled through from my Gmail. So I never actually have to go into my Google calendars unless I'm adding something in there. I just look at it from ClickUp on a day-to-day -day basis. So this, I just, this is where I live. This is my day-to-day -day is in the home dashboard of ClickUp. I just feel like if everything else is built out well and it's maintained, then you never really need to go in there unless you're planning. So that's just my opinion. Okay, so you'll see over on the left hand side here that I have five spaces. Here I have personal, I have goals, marketing, client projects and digital products. So if we have a look at personal, what I mostly use it for in terms of personal is I manage any personal tasks that I have just to kind of keep a running track of things that I want to do, things that I need to do. So if I click on personal tasks, you'll see in here that I've got rinse and repeat, which is a weekly checklist of things that I want to get done each weekend just to kind of like set myself up for the coming week. I also have a monthly one and then like a quarterly deep clean one. So I keep these in here under rinse and repeat because they're set to automatically repeat on a schedule. So if I click on the due date over here, you'll see that this reoccurs every three months on the last Sunday of the month. And then anything that I want to get done at some point, I will put into this list and I will contextualize it 
whether it's uh, a, I want to do it at home, I need to be on the computer, whether it's an errand, I'll add all of those within here. I also have a purchase wish list. Anytime I think of anything that I'm like, oh, I really need to get a new pair of white sneakers or whatever it might be, I'll put them in to this purchase wish list. So if I'm ever out somewhere or I happen to be somewhere where I'm like, while I'm here, is there anything I need to buy kind of thing. I also keep all of our like go-to recipes in here as well. So each week when I'm doing our grocery list, I can just go in here and we can decide what we want to eat for the week. We don't have to be like, try and scour the internet. We will have kind of like our favorite go-tos. So I have put them all in here. I've also taken a photo and put it in here. Um, I've taken a photo off the blog, off the recipe post where I get the recipes from. And I also have the recipe link. So all I have to do when I'm doing my grocery list each week is come in here, decide what we want to eat, click on the link, write out my grocery list. And I also have a book club, which I haven't, there's nothing in this yet because I haven't started building it out. But that's one thing I want to add in there is a list of books that I want to read or have read. So that's pretty much how I use it for personal goals. I also have like my quarter one, so financial quarter one sprint goals here. And I have them all on their own itemized list because each goal has a bunch of steps underneath it that I need to do to achieve that goal. So what I do is I put them into a folder they all have their individual lists because then I can just click on this folder and I can see them all here. So those are my goals for the like a 12 week period. The next one is marketing. Now this is my content calendar area. I have my all of my content within one folder again so that I can click on that folder and view at a glance on the calendar when all of my content's going to be going out in the coming weeks. And I have these color coded. So all of my YouTube videos are in pink, all of my newsletters are in green, and any social media content is in blue. As you can see, I'm very slack with my content. <laughs> For social media, we'll get there. So those are all listed out here. And then each one has its own list for my content. I break these up into different views. So you'll see here, this is the current in progress fields for content. I also have all of my content ideas in here as well so that when I'm looking for content I can just come in here and refer to my list to find things to make videos about. I also keep all of my video scripts in here. ClickUp has a documents system within it and honestly it is amazing and you can add them at any level within here. You can add them under a folder, you can add them into a task, you can add them in the list which I have up here. So my video scripts are always kept on the actual list where I need them. One mistake I made when I first started using ClickUp was to create a new document for kind of like, let's say every single YouTube video had its own individual document, which meant that I ended up with a lot of documents. So if I came into my documents section here, there were so many documents in there and they were just kind of getting a bit messy. What I do now is I actually only have one document for my YouTube videos, and then I break these down into sub pages within that one document. Keeps everything together, it makes it easy to refer to it, and I can still link each of the sub pages to the relevant video. YouTube videos, same with social media, same with my weekly newsletter, they all have their own individual lists. And then I have a marketing task folder, which is just any general marketing related tasks that I want to do, need to do, think of at any point, they get put on this list. And then each week I will have a look at this list and see if there's anything that I can add to my current coming week that needs to get done. I also have website tasks separated from this because this is just little things that I need to finish or need to do on my website. I have them in here as well. Then I have client projects. Now each one of my clients have their own folder because I have a list for my tasks and I have a list for their tasks so that they're only seeing their tasks and not all of the individual tasks that I have, which includes like setting up a folder, sending a proposal, you know, like stuff they don't really need to see. So I set them up as lists first, but then I create a client dashboard for them to see, which I'll show you in a second as well. But within here, I have an individual folder for clients. I also have a working template folder because I'm in the process of refining my website design process. So I have a working template here for my project, um, the same as what it would be for a client, but I'm kind of slowly tweaking it to just refine that process and then resave that template. 
if you're not really sure what I mean by templates and templates, I don't have an entire video on that. I will put it up here somewhere and I'll also link it in the description below. I also have a client design task. Again, this is just ad hoc miscellaneous tasks that are related to client work that I want to get done at some point. So I put them in this section. I also have a client database where I just keep track of all of my design clients. And the very last one, which is a new one, which there's not really anything in here because I'm still in the process of building it out, but that is digital products. Now coming down here to dashboards. Dashboards are something that when I first started with ClickUp, I didn't really see the point of them. I was like, oh, I'm probably not gonna use it. Um, and just kind of ignored them for a while. But I ended up watching a video, I can't even think of whose video it was, but it was a video on how to use dashboards to create like client dashboards. So I was really intrigued by that. So I've built out a client dashboard and then I've also used it for my tasks. So first I'll show you this client dashboard. So I have one currently for a current project I have. And all that's in here is just a bit of information. I also have a video walking them through what they need to be walked through for their project, some contact information, access to their Google Drive, access to their client lounge, a chat section, and then obviously their list of tasks that they need to complete. It just makes it really easy to be able to share that with them in a really clean view. So I've been using this for client projects and it's 10 out of 10 would recommend. You're probably thinking, okay, you have task lists everywhere under every single space. I know because I like to contextualize my tasks, but I also keep them here under this task dashboard so that each week when I want to review those tasks, review those miscellaneous tasks, I just come to my, my task dashboard. So you see here, I have my personal tasks, my marketing tasks, my website updates, and then my design project tasks. So this dashboard I've set up to pull in those lists from all over my workspace so that I can see them all in one view. How freaking cool is that? So that's how I review my tasks, even though I have lists everywhere for them. Okay, so how do I manage that ClickUp process? Let me break it down. So on a monthly basis, I will review all of my spaces, my lists, my templates, and I'll make any adjustments to workflows. I'll adjust any statuses or just fix anything that's kind of been a little bit sticky over the last month, just to make sure that everything is working the way it is and it's being used for its intended purpose. Then on a weekly basis, as part of my weekly reset, I will go and clean out all of my email inboxes. I'll move anything that needs to go into my Google calendars into my Google calendars anything within my emails that need to be actioned, I will create a task for them under ClickUp. And I'll also go through my capture folders. So I have two capture folders. One is within the notes section of ClickUp. In the bottom right corner here, we have this little square. If I click on that, we have a notepad. If you don't see the notepad on your ClickUp, there's a setting for it within your workspace settings where you have to actually activate this or turn it on but I use this notepad section and I have a brain dump here where I will just brain dump anything that comes to mind. If I'm sitting at my computer and I think of something, I will put it in my brain dump as a, oh, that's a good idea or, oh, I need to deal with that. And I leave it there for later. I don't worry about putting it in the right folder in ClickUp because then I have to like plan it and contextualize it and do all of that. So it just goes straight on my notepad under my brain dump section and it's left there until my weekly reset where I put it into ClickUp where it needs to go. The second section I have is on my phone. So on my phone, I use a app called To Do. I use this for my grocery list and I use this for capturing information really quickly. Now I do have the ClickUp app on my phone and I can access it to use a notepad. However, it just takes a few more steps. Whereas the To Do app, I have this set up as a widget on my phone and all I have to do is click one button and it pops up and I can type in whatever I need to type in and then it's done. I can close it and not think about it until it's time to think about it. In terms of time blocking day to days, I won't normally time block during the week because being that I work a nine to five and I've only kind of got like an hour or so in the morning and an hour and a couple hours at night to get work done. I don't really need to time block because there's usually only a couple of things on my calendar. However, on weekends, I will 
utilize the calendar within ClickUp to time block my time just to kind of keep myself on track, keep myself accountable. So you'll see if I come into today, I have record video content and screen captures on my calendar already. Now I'm behind <laughs> as you can see, but all you have to do to do that over here on the left, you can see the task that is due that day, or it might be overdue because I have a couple of those. So to time block your time on your calendar, all you need to do is find the task that you want to time block and then drag it onto the calendar at the time that you want to get that done. So I can drop this one here. Now that's the default. It'll always show an hour, but you can just drag and move it. it could be shorter, it could be longer, whatever you need to get that task done. You can time block it that way. And you can do that for all the tasks in your calendar just to kind of keep yourself on track during the day. And that is it, my friends. That is how I manage my entire life using Google Calendar and ClickUp. If you want to give ClickUp a go, there is a link in the description below. That is it for this video. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thumbs up, buttercup. <laughs> Google, Google, click up, click, Google, click up, Google, click up, click up, Google Calendar. That's what we were talking about, Google Calendar.